All right, if we could uh, invite the directors up for a brief Q&A. Directors that are in attendance. Yeah, you can just come right up the stairs here. That's everyone, right? Okay. And if everyone can just, if you can all just move up a bit to the front here. Yeah. All right. So let's ask uh, each of you first if you could introduce yourself and tell us which was your film. I guess we'll start here with Alyssa. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm taking my mask off, huh? Yeah, on the stage we're permitted okay. to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was the um, the last film, <laughs> um, the uh, finance of art. <laughs> which is a short film, but it's also uh, part of a series, too, called The Madness of Art. Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Andy Janelle Leggett, and my film was Clementine. Okay. I'm Grayson. My film was The Bugs and the Slugs. <laughs> oh my All right. Hi, uh, John Gray. I wrote and directed The Third Defector. Okay. Wow. Hi, I'm Joe Benedetto. I wrote and directed Darwin Fick, and I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. So uh, let me first ask. Well, Joe, th uh, the character of Darwin Fick. Uh, how did you come up with this with this character? Well, it, it's one of those things. Obviously, it's a it's a spin on the Faustian theme, uh, which has done <coughs> been done obviously a million times. But I wanted to kind of put my own unique uh, take on it. So um, I had the character in mind for some time. Um, I want to thank my co-producers uh, Eve Austin and Kristen Samuelson who basically commissioned me to come up with something for them to star in, and they kind of gave me carte blanche, and, and we kind of agreed that was the movie we wanted to make. And by the way, I did not know what the word fic meant in German when I came up with the title, so Google it right now. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask, I wasn't sure where the, yeah. the name yeah. came from. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> fic is not a very pleasant word in German, but I didn't know that when we made the film. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll go to, uh, to John, um, uh, the third defector. So, yeah, do um, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Did you always want to shoot a film in Paris? or? What? Yeah, well, I, 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 I love spy thrillers. Um, and uh, I had, was lucky enough to make a film, a short film in Paris for Marriott uh, a few years ago. And I stayed in touch with the actors and I stayed in touch with the production company uh, who we did it for. And I finally just decided I, I've got to. I just want to do another movie in Paris. I just love it so much there, and I love those actors. And so um, I was able to make a deal with that production company for very little money um, because they were still struggling uh, with, the, you know, with, the, with the pandemic. And they were like, "Well, come on, we, you know, we, everyone just come over and get, we'll get some work, and we'll do everything for very little money." And uh, I, I wrote something that I could use all those same actors in because I knew other no other actors in Paris. So th those are my actors. And uh, we just we shot for three days, and, and just uh, it was a real guerrilla style filmmaking, just running around Paris, no permits, just <laughs> just uh, you know shooting it and uh, just having a blast, and not not a single interior. <laughs> and uh, I don't speak French, but it was still you know <laughs> it was a lot of fun just trying just trying to keep up. And uh, Grayson for the the, the bugs and the, s and the slugs. Um, so this is such an interesting concept. Um, I think I first heard of it when it premiered. I think it was at Slam Dance. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's such. How did you come up with this concept? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I wanted to make a fantasy movie. I'm a big like sci-fi fantasy head, and then um, I also thought um, little little love story, forbidden romance would be fun to place in that context. And then I think the design of it came kind of mostly out of like budgetary like constraints. Like what what could we do with our resources that like would look right? So like bald caps and body body paint and then shooting in the woods and like replacing the color of the, of the leaves. And then it kind of just came from there, so yeah. Where did you shoot that, by the way? Connecticut. Cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, Clementine, how did you start with the concept for Clementine? 
Yeah, so I actually didn't write Clementine. Um, Jessica, the star, um, she wrote it, and she's a stand-up comedian. Um, we're good friends from undergrad, and um, one day she invited me to her stand-up show, and I was like, oh God, I hope she's really good. Um, <laughs> and then I went, and she killed it, and she told this like really funny bit about how her therapist broke up with her. And so I went up to her after the show, and I was like, Jess, that was hilarious. Like, you should you should film that, like, you know, do a reenactment. Um, and so that kind of just pushed us. She wrote most of it. I kind of, like, helped revise it. And, we, yeah, that, that's kind of how it happened. Cool. Right. Um, and um, the art of finance, uh, I, I was going to ask you, ask you about it being a series because the way these characters interact is so funny, and they could watch them for hours. It's hilarious. Um, so how did you come up with – well, Miss Red and Blue, wh why the, why are those the names, and how did you come up with the concept overall? Well, the the writers over there, oh. and and he did come up with <laughs> it. Um, you know, the whole the whole series is part of uh, a madness of art, which is uh, Jim Kempner has a gallery on Tenth Avenue and Twenty Third, and it's a really great gallery. So Jim Kempner, that is a real. He's a he's a real gallery owner. Okay. It's a really great gallery, and he. Um, uh, he has a stand-up and a comedic and an, an, an actor, you know, he's an actor. So it's... Is it's that like him in the movie or is that It really is him in the oh. movie, yeah. Okay. So we decided to do a season of more, you know, short pieces, each one standalone, but they could go together as well. So I asked Gary to help write about five or six episodes, and this was one of them, and he came up with that whole story and one of the actresses marie callis oh, is, yeah. is here and right. nice. he um and we you know cast marie and you know yeah. the actor in it but Are, do all the episodes take place in the gallery like that, is that everything takes place in the gallery so yeah all that and they're often it's a uh, very much you know about the survival of the gallery yeah um you can see madness of art online um, but the series either madness of art or for the love of art there's like two factions of it are kind of in the festival circuit right now gotcha. but okay. uh, we had a ball doing it nice yeah <laughs> this is really really great and i wanted to ask about uh quick and then i'll i'll open up to the audience but for darwin fick um I, there were a couple points here where it bounced around um the timeline did you initially have it in order and then switched it or did you always want it to be no that was that was totally um conceived and and, and originally plotted out by me to have a non-linear timeline just something i wanted to do i hadn't done that in a while um and i just felt it was a better way to kind of present that story um you know so yeah that was that was totally totally planned out and from 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 the original uh when when i had the kernel of the idea all right, so anybody have any questions? Um, for, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sure. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, our director isn't here for Silk, so my group said you should go up, so I, I co-wrote it. And I think, is David here, my co-writer? I don't know if David's here. Yeah, David, hi. I don't know. I can't see. Uh, so I, I co-wrote and was lead producer on Silk, and we have my co-EP on Silk, so I'm here representing oh, John. Marissa, Marissa Gavani. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, you want to tell us about the inspiration? Sure. Um, I I wanted to create a film that depicted um, more insidious forms of abuse, namely gaslighting. And I love the old Oscar-winning film Gaslight, but I knew that like young folks don't really know what gas lamps are and that that doesn't really make sense. And so if folks were to watch that old film, they might not really understand it. And I'm an actor as well, and I was in a play with the lead actress in our film, Krista Marie Jackson, and she's a beautiful aerialist. She was in Daya's body double in The Greatest Showman and is like Beyonce's aerialist and all this stuff. I just thought, I wanna put her in a movie. And then I thought, wait a minute, what if the gaslighting wasn't gas lamps, but it was a lighting designer um, and, and an aerialist? So um, I pitched the idea to um, David. I was interviewing some co-writers because I had never written before and David was like, no, this is this is really smart. It isn't silly. It isn't stupid. You have to go with this. Like, this is really original. So um, we did it together, and we just wanted to create something that was sort of a, a, a little wink to that classic film, but in an updated version that I think people can relate to more nowadays. So the, the film is like the classic film of the A little bit. I mean, I a little bit, yeah. yeah. It's an Ingrid, Ingrid Bergman, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. So does anybody have any um, questions for any of the filmmakers? Anyone at all? Feel free to raise your hand. Yes.
is Clementine going to be a series? Um, I get that question a lot. I uh, That wasn't the original plan, but it is a fun character, and yeah, it's something that we're thinking about. Would Clementine perhaps become like a feature film? Um, that wasn't the original plan, but maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions? Any questions? Oh, yes, go ahead. No, we were handheld the entire time. Um, but basically, we were just very careful planning. Uh, we, we spent a lot of time prepping it, and we just uh, took the crew out, and we walked through every single shot. Uh, everyone knew exactly what we were going to do. Um, so once, when, when, the, when the moment came, we just were able to kind of automatically just, okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. Uh, and you know, people in Paris are just amazing. They're so um, sympathetic to filmmakers. They're so cooperative. And you know, used to in New York, you say to somebody, "Excuse me, could you get yeah, get out of here with your movie? Get out of you know." <laughs> in Paris, oh, pardon, pardon. You know, <laughs> uh, it, it was amazing how just how nice they were. And it, it, th there's that spot with the with the Eiffel Tower at the end of that street, the famous street. Everyone's there taking pictures, getting married, uh, and we had, we were able to just get people to like, can, she's mine. You know, we're a quick shot right here. You know, ah, oh, pardon, yes. Mm. So it was a great experience. Just loved it, loved the people there, and, and just uh, you know, what, what could be wrong with Paris? Do you need like permits, like the way you do in New York? Is it a similar kind of? Well, you can get permits um, for some very small crew, you know, seven to eight people. Uh, but the problem is, you you have to get it so far in advance that we weren't really able to deal with that because I, I couldn't get over there in time to, to, to like a month or so in advance. We were uh, we just had a few days of prep you know, before, so we just kind of said we're going to be very fast, very small. And we'll be gone before anyone even notices that, that, that we were there. And then we were. <laughs> okay, any other um, qu question? Yes, go ahead. Concept came about for the third defector. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, it really. Um, I, 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 I love uh, twists and, and turns and mystery, and most of my short films involve a twist of some kind. Uh, I always try to do a triple twist if I can. Uh, how, you know, if I can get away with that, uh, and I don't know. I've, I've just gotten. I've done a bunch of them, and um, I guess you, you know, you just you strive for a certain economy in the visuals and in the storytelling, so that you end up jamming a lot of stuff in. In, in as you know, few minutes as possible, because that's you know that's all we all we got. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask for the bugs and the slugs. Did you was that a lot of computer animation? How did you develop that? Yeah, the the little slug creature guy. That was uh, my older brother created the CG model and had a couple buddies help animate that. And then um, we had one one more person do some some models for some like troll huts that were in the background. And then I did the compositing and the color replacement all in After Effects. Great. Okay, any other? Uh, yes, in the back. Um, I'm curious about the uh, process of uh, choreographing the aerialist piece. Mm. Um. Yeah, so we, um, Krista choreographed it herself, um, and we worked with the woman who did the original music and basically um, had her shoot lots of different things. And our director, who's not here tonight, John Magaro, who's who's a wonderful actor. Um, his cousin Jeremy's here, though. So I remember John was like, "Just just hang out up there. Just just hang out while we figure out the next thing." And she was like, "There's no such thing as hanging out in the air." <laughs> like it was really tough. So we put her through a lot to do that. Um, but she's brilliant, and and she did it herself. And then it was sort of a in in editing and post, which our assistant editor Jess is here tonight, and our co EP. And in post, it was sort of piecing together everything that we had to make it you know, somewhat evocative of, of what we were trying to depict in the moment. Were there a lot of theater people on that team? It, it feels a lot so of theater people? Like the um, theater in its texture. In a way, yeah. I mean, we did shoot kind of in a theatrical space over at Irondale, which was a beautiful location. Um, and I think, I mean, my co-writer, David, is a, is a playwright, um, Fran Krantz, who plays uh, Saul, the lead guy. Um, he, he wrote and uh, produced and directed Mass 
recently, but he that was really written as a play. He's been on Broadway. Um, yeah, and um, and uh, yeah, he's he's brilliant. How so did you get him? Um, <laughs> uh, well, I I'm an actor, and I knew John from acting in a movie with John. Um, and so John and Fran had worked together, and then I came on. I actually co-produced Mass. So um, from that film. Uh, same with Garcia, who's brilliant, and Louisa Krauss. They had all kind of worked with John, and, and he was lovely and just kind of bringing his friends onto the project. But yeah, I mean, I think everybody's done theater as well as film and TV. Louisa Krauss, um, I think, originated, um, she was in the flick, Annie Baker. So yeah, I mean, I think that, everybody. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely, lovely. Yeah, she's wonderful. So I think, yeah, I mean, a lot of, anytime you shoot something in New York, aren't we all sort of doing theater too, right? I mean, a little bit. But yeah, good question. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, all right, go ahead. Yes. Oh, that's Francis Chen. Yeah, she's, she's lovely. Francis Chen came out here tonight, but she did a great job. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky to shoot that, especially on a budget. <laughs> but she did a really nice job. Oh, thanks. Could I, um, what was the budget for that film? Um, should I say? Am I allowed to say? It was 20K, yeah. Yeah. So uh, my nonprofit was behind it, so we were able to actually um, get certain things for free, giving a tax write-off, right? We offer fiscal sponsorships to folks who, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, who, uh, who write movies that are in line with, like, healing trauma and abuse, so... Yeah, that's what's your, what's your nonprofit? Uh, it's called Healing Tree. It stands for Healing Trauma uh, Resources Education. And now we've rebranded, so the last word is now entertainment as we're sort of shifting more in there. I just want to interview you all now, too. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to grab one last question. Yes, go ahead. For every filmmaker, um, if you got carte blanche, limited budget, what's the next project that you would do in three sentences? Wow. Great question. All right, in three sentences, what would be the trick next project you would do? Well, I know what my next project it would, would be. So, um, well, I'm working on a, uh, a series called Respect, R-E-S-P-E-K-T, that uh, deals, it's all uh, inspired by true stories. Um, and the first season is about women's rights. And the second season is more about uh, sexual rights most likely, um, and each story is, even though it's anthology, it's, it's not, it's connected um, one piece to the next, um, and I think really explores some pretty heavy duty things in a dramatic, but also some humor and lightness of being. <laughs> awesome, yeah, great question. So um, it would be a television series, and it's basically, um, uh, inspired by the rise of the trauma studies field back in the 80s. So a lot of uh, men get the credit for that and a lot of women are sort of overshadowed. So it would be centered on a female psychiatrist who is in basically a psych ward and realizes um, based on like the first guest star, the first patient that comes in uh, who is having all these very crazy symptoms, but it's just trauma. And then she looks around at everyone else who might have a more intense diagnosis like schizophrenia or DID, and then she realizes, oh wait, it's, it's all actually trauma. And so um, it would be sort of told in flashbacks similar to Orange is the New Black, but with trauma treatment modalities being the thing that leads to the flashback so that you are seeing how people got these symptoms based on their life experiences. And ideally we would have the audience Googling is EMDR real, basically trauma treatment modalities that would look like potentially magic on screen, but they're real and they're out there now. So it would be sort of art meets advocacy. Um, I'm currently working on a feature. It's a coming of age comedy drama um, about a young black teen in a predominantly white uh, neighborhood. And it takes place over a summer and she's navigating first love and furrying friendships. Um, uh, my dream movie would be this like time traveling space epic <laughs> that it like st <laughs> it starts on Mars at like the end of humanity and then they have to like travel back in time to the beginning of humanity to find a way to save themselves in the future and um, yeah the ragtag group of a uh, gang. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad no one did three sentences because I can't I just I can't handle that. Um, there I, I have run on sentences. I have <laughs> I have an idea for a TV series I'm hoping someday do, 
uh, when I grew up and, and get smarter. But it's about um, the supernatural and uh, in different cultures. And I'd like to spend a season uh, in, a, in a different culture and, and explore in a, in a sort of gothic horror uh, um, genre, genre, if you will, uh, uh, how we use the supernatural in our culture, what it does for us, um, uh, how it uh, oppresses some people, how it frees other people. Uh, it, it just it would be a, you know, kind of an open-ended series that would go over, every season would be a different country, a different, uh, a different culture. And, as Woody Allen would say, it's on FM radio now, so I'm just going just gonna to shut up. Yeah, I think the carte blanche question <clears throat> that was asked of us, we all ended up kind of just going into what we're doing next. So I'm doing a comedy next that's going to kind of, I'm going to try to reinvent the wheel in terms of bringing back comedies that are actually funny. Um, so whether or not I'm going to have carte blanche on it, I don't know, because usually you go into something thinking you're going to have carte blanche and you don't. So I think that's a separate question, which really none of us can answer, because uh, so I think she's the only one that answered it honestly. But um, yeah, the carte blanche thing is tough. But yeah, that's my next thing. All right. I want to thank all of the filmmakers. Thank you all for being here. And congratulations. Thanks everyone. for having us. Thank you.